What is going on guys? So it's been roughly six months since I've actually been driving the Procharged Mach 1 behind me. So we're gonna be kind of going over just my opinions and everything on centrifugal superchargers as a whole and whether or not you should actually buy one for your car. Now I do understand that not everyone may understand the difference between a centrifugal supercharger and a root style or a twin screw supercharger. So we're just gonna show that really quick. This is a centrifugal supercharger. This is the Procharger brand. Other brands are like Vortec, uh, Paxton makes some, but basically they are turbo-like superchargers that are still belt driven, but they run through and they have an intercooler in the front and then they go straight to the throttle plate. Now I have a lot of good things to say about centrifugal superchargers as a whole. For one, my intake temps are always super low thanks to the intercooler right down there. Uh, it never really gets above ambient temp. Even up under boost is maybe 10 degrees hotter. So it is not bad at all. You don't have to worry about heat soaking and multiple runs don't really change the intake temps at all. Now, another thing that I absolutely love about centrifugal superchargers is most of them are self-contained, meaning that they do not have oil feed lines running to them and the oil is contained within the actual supercharger itself. There is a drain plug that is up under the supercharger and whenever it's time to change the oil every 5,000 miles, you just drain it out and then you open that little plug right there and just dump the entire thing in. And that's all it is. Now, one of my personal favorite things about centrifugal superchargers is how they sound. They are very unique in the way that they sound and they are most loud at idle actually. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick. We'll start this thing up. They have a very loud whine at idle. Here, we'll rev it up a little bit. Now the way that centrifugal superchargers actually make boost is kind of unique. So they make boost on like a linear type scale. So the higher the RPM, the more boost that these cars are gonna be making. Now that is also dependent upon the actual blow off valves being closed. Meaning if I really wanted to, I could be at 6,000 RPM and still have the blow off valves open because they're vacuum actuated and produce no boost at all, even at 6,000 RPM. Now the reason that I like this so much is because it honestly does put way less of a strain on your engine and you're not even gonna really notice that you have a supercharged car while you're just normally driving it. Because if you're just staying on the throttle just a little bit, not enough to actually close the blow off valves, then you're not ever gonna be producing any boost. And you just basically have just a, a jet engine sound up under your hood and it just drives like a normal car. Now this is my dyno chart. And as you can see, the scale is very linear with the boost. So you see the bottom line, that is my horsepower. And it just continues to climb until we cut it off at 6,200 RPM. Same down here, as you can see with the boost. The boost just progressively ramps up with RPM. Now there's really only two things that I do not like about centrifugal superchargers. The first one being that they are not super noisy whenever you're high up in the RPM band, like a root style or twin screw supercharger that just screams while you're getting on it. These make the most noise at idle and then a little bit of noise in between shifts whenever the blow off valves actually open to release the boost. Now, the second thing that I don't really like about centrifugal superchargers is they don't produce a lot of power down low. You have to wait until the RPMs climb above like 3,500 RPM. So if you punch it below there, you're really not going to go anywhere, especially if you have like a 4.6 liter V8 like me that already produces <laughs> no horsepower down low. You know, these things use RPM to their advantage and make all their power up top. And so does the pro charger. So up top, it pulls like a freight train. You know, it, the power just continues to climb, but down low, you're not really gonna be doing anything. So the way that I combat this is I actually put 410 gears in the rear of this car to help me kind of get into the power band quicker off the line or in a street race. So that is it for today, guys. If you wanna see more videos with the Pro Charge Mach 1 right here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video, comment what you wanna see, and I'll see you next time.